We have this story from the Post Millennial. Illegal immigrant stabs two others, flees back to Mexico after being shot by National Guardsmen. The two who were stabbed received non-life-threatening injuries. So uh, there's a lot of news over the weekend, of course, uh, Iran striking Israel. We're currently waiting to see if Israel respond. But uh, this story, of course, has been bubbling up. And I think this one uh, affecting our southern border and involving a National Guardsman shooting an illegal immigrant, I think, is is a uh, I don't know. I mean, th- is this crossing the Rubicon or is this just to me, it seems like we've gone from illegal immigrants attacking National Guard and then being let into the country to now National Guard have this is it. We, we were hearing stories about the National Guard requesting the the uh, the the ability to open fire on illegal immigrants if they need to. And now it's happened. So I'm I'm maybe this is just a flash in the pan. Nothing else happens. But it certainly th- seems like conflict on the southern border is is bubbling up. Mm-hmm. This could be a shot heard around the world kind of thing where well, the National Guard just shot a guy trying to break into the country. Well, and what does it mean for other people who are trying to cross into the country? Are they going to be looking at this saying, I'm taking my life into my hands by approaching these National Guard and I need to be armed myself, you know? I mean, this guy was clearly How would they know? Because they're like, you know, being smuggled into the country and I'm not sure they're scanning Twitter. So I think it would take a while for for them to, for that to filter back. And and also it depends on what the, what the reaction of our government is. I mean, the, the last time we had something even close to this happen, the National Guard was castigated, or you know, our law enforcement officials were castigated for allegedly using horse whips on, which they on were not. these aliens, which, they, which were they were not. And now I think when when you see um, it, like suburban, sunny San Diego, you see a boat pull up on the beach and dozens of people come out of it. I think the Overton window <clears throat> of Americans' tolerance for what's happening at the border is actually shifting. Let's let's play right. Let's play this video. Actually, is this uh, we have we have the video here. Libs of TikTok posted it. This reportedly happened yesterday in Carlsbad, California. A group of mostly military age males invaded our country illegally via boat and then dispersed to the city in cars. Are any of them on the terror watch list? Do any of them have a criminal history? We don't know. We have no clue who is in our country. Take a look at this. This is nuts. They outright it's abandoned shocking. the boat. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of people on that boat. It's like a clown car. Watch it's like this. like a clown car. It's crazy. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There's nine. Ten. Eleven. Twelve. Thirteen. Fourteen. Fifteen. Sixteen. Seventeen. There still might be people climbing out. Those guys could have, like, explosives strapped to their chests. This has got to be, like, 18, uh, 20 people on the one boat. They abandoned it. The crazy thing. Carlsbad is one of the wealthier areas. That's what I'm saying is like, you don't see that. You see, oh, the Tijuana border. You see people coming over there. You do not see this on the beaches of California. That's like our Rubicon, as you say, like that does not happen. I may be mistaken because it's been, you know, 10 years since I covered this. But during the drought in uh, the 2010s, Carlsbad was one of the areas where the people were demanding the right to water their lawns during a drought. Oh, yeah. This large... is a wealthy, upscale coastal community. And there are tech companies there now. Yep. It's an, like this is not what anybody who's paying taxes there wants to see in their neighborhood. I'm telling you. Are they going to? They're going to vote for Trump. They have to. Well, I don't know about that. <laughs> Let's not get crazy here. But uh, I think people yeah, are not going to. I mean, I, I can tell you in San Francisco, you know, the, the Karens are suddenly like, well, what's going on? Like people are pooping on my doorstep and you know, this is not cool. So people really are losing their tolerance when it's happening on their doorstep. You know, there's a wild viral video. I don't have it pulled up, but it's a lady who's like reaching her hand through a smashed window trying to take stuff out of a store. That is crazy you in Sacramento. It? Yeah, in Sacramento. That's nuts. And then the cops ride by and cops stop and look bikes. at her and then they just leave. Oh, that's, <laughs> They look yeah, at her for a minute much. and they, yeah, they just keep going. She's, now, I don't, I, I, the, I, the video, I, in the video, I don't, uh, I don't know if she smashes the window, but she's like rifling her through the window, grabbing stuff. And then she walks, w- walks away from the stairs and is like grabbing stuff in the front of the building, moving bricks and the cops just look at her and then leave. No question, just okay. She's good. Not getting involved. Yep. That's I, the... You know, you said in the intro that uh, voting for Trump for some people is life or for, for some people is life or death. I think for this country, it's life or death. That's what I meant to say yeah. is that we are every day seeing things we took for granted completely eroded. I'm seeing the way that judges predictably used to rule 
just they're going the opposite direction for purely political reasons. And so, you know, the, the rule of law is eroding on a daily basis in our country. Well, here's a cra- I mean, this is crazy. The, there's that Apple River, like we're jumping all over the place, but there was that Apple River story in Wisconsin. You see that one? Mm-hmm. Uh, I was looking at, uh, I was listening to uh, uh, Law of Self-Defense. We've uh, He's been on the show. Um, and he said, uh, I'm, I'm drawing a blank on his name. Forgive me. Uh, you know, if you're an older guy with a pacemaker, you're surrounded by a bunch of people screaming at you, attacking you, you have a right to defend yourself. And mm-hmm. I'm thinking to myself, well, then why is he going to prison? Why did a judge convict him? Why, or why did a jury or a judge or whoever convict him? I just see more and more. Uh, I'm not a lawyer, but it looks to me, based on what I'm seeing in the courts, that it feels like this country is rapidly devolving into people. I, I, I've described this among the political class. The Titanic has hit the iceberg, so they're rushing to steal all the fine china they can and get into a lifeboat and leave before people realize the ship is sinking. And so I see what appears to be judges where they're just either hyper-partisan, totally on board with whatever lie or whatever, you know, like everything everything against Trump, or outright just don't know, don't care, just it doesn't matter, just get in my courtroom, bang the gavel, you're done. Yeah, well, what you're actually seeing is even before that, it's the prosecutors. So over the last two decades, Soros has managed to purchase the prosecutors in major cities throughout the United States, including in places you wouldn't have expected. And the net result of that is that they usually ignore crime that affects most of us. And then they selectively prosecute crime for political purposes to shame people, to change the outcome of people's behavior. You're seeing that in Alvin Bragg's court, you know, court case to, uh, this week in New York. You're seeing it in Philadelphia. You're seeing it in Wisconsin. I mean, where we're going to be having the RNC meeting, uh, the National Convention in Milwaukee, is that kind of prosecutorial setup. So you wonder if people attack us, if Antifa attacks people going to the convention, who is going to get prosecuted? Because I can guarantee you some of them are going to fight back. And well, so- I, you know, we're we're planning on being at the RNC, but the DNC is in Chicago and I wouldn't, I wouldn't, you, there's nothing that would convince me to go to Chicago during the DNC. You saw the yeah. video from over the weekend. It was activists in Chicago learning how to say death to America, death to Israel in Farsi. Yep. Yeah. At a meeting that was designed to teach everyone how to disrupt mm-hmm. the DNC. I mean, look, that's the other big story. I'm like trying to get through all these stories in the intro to the show. We had waves of uh, uh, pro-Palestine and some pro-Hamas protesters shutting down bridges and airports all across the country it was a today. a day of action. Oh, man. And I think it was, uh, what I saw a, what something wild... about how it might have been funded by the, interna- the um, Iranian Revolutionary Guard or whatever. Oh, that would be crazy. Yeah, isn't that sort of nuts? But I mean, this 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 we're we're though. seven seven and a half minutes into the first segment. We've gone from National Guardsman <laughs> shoots illegal immigrant to crime in the streets. Now we're cr- criminal prosecutions, and now Hamas and Iranian funded protests in the United States. Jeez, what happened this you weekend? Know, just, it's like a switch was flicked. To specify on this post millennial article, did, did you write this about the? No, I didn't. Did I think the guy? This was Tommy. It said that he stabbed two people. Yeah. The guy came across the border legally and then he cut two people. Is he that was, what happened? Yeah, he was stabbed. stabbing. Yeah. He was Difference. stabbing two people. That's true. He put it in them. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Not tip like, of the blade. That's a stab as opposed that's to a, a slash across, which yeah. would be a cut. Um, and then and then the guy opened fire on him after yeah. he saw him attempt murder. So that it's not like he shot a, an illegal, a, a criminal alien. I mean, technically, he shot an attempted murderer mm-hmm. in self def- in defense of others. So yes, like, this is I think a guy, that, that like, kind of argument. This was always the point. At what point does the violence start? You know, like uh, we've seen photos and videos of, of cartel guys with rifles smuggling humans across the border. Mm-hmm. And then the na- then Republicans had that bill where they were requesting authorization for the National Guard to use lethal force if need be. A lot of concern that we would get to the point where there would be active conflict on the border. Now, this may be one crazy guy doing one crazy thing and sooner or later it was bound to happen. But again, this is, you know, in the world. It's only possible until someone proves it's possible. There's quite literally a trick in skateboarding called impossible. Now, you don't have to know about anything about skateboarding, but let me tell you this. There's a trick in skateboarding called the impossible, which is one of the most commonly done maneuvers ever. And it was because back in the day, one of the big names in the industry said doing this trick would be impossible. So then some guy did it. And now it's so common. Children do it. My point is. People think it's not possible to get to the point where the National Guard is opening fire on waves of criminal aliens storming the gates or something like that. Now we have a National Guardsman shooting a guy, shooting an illegal immigrant. It is entirely possible this escalates. It is entirely possible the National Guard shoots someone else. And that's that's the concern. Is this is this that breaking point where it's like, oh, man, like our border is so damaged now 
We actually just had a National Guardsman shoot a guy. What happens if this gets worse? What happens if now the cartel showing up saying, hey, if you bring someone and that person acts up, they're going to shoot at you. You need to be prepared. What, what does that mean? Do they, do they wear body armor now? Does it change? Do they change their tactics? Does this result in the escalation? It could do. I keep wondering if we've already passed that point that in history books, they're going to say, you know, this was the assassination of Archduke Ferdinand. You know, I keep wondering about that. Could be was it this? Iran. Was it Iran shooting Nobody missiles knows, at? Man. Thanks for watching this clip from the Timcast IRL podcast. Hang out with us live Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. and become a member over at Timcast.com for uncensored members-only shows exclusive. Thanks for hanging out, and we'll see you all next time.